Hi everyone, if you are interested to deposit or invest an amount right now for certain number of years and is willing to find out its future value using Excel. But in the scenario when we have different rates of interest in different years. How this can be done in Excel, let's see in this video. But based on compounding, we have three cases. Let's see those cases first. In case number one, which is the simplest one, with the changes in the rates of interest in different years, there is annual compounding for all the years. While in case number two, the different rates of interest in different years is associated with the changes in the compounding and case number three is similar to case number two where the compounding is divided into two parts for certain years there is discrete compounding while for some years there is continuous compounding so how these cases can be solved in excel let's First see problem there is an amount of rupees 5 lakh 50 thousand which is being deposited that earns interest at the rate of 3% per annum for the first two years, 4% per annum for the next two years and 5% thereafter. We are required to find out the amount that is the future value after seven years assuming that there are annual compoundings. So I have shown this information on this timeline for better understanding as the deposit is being made for seven years so we need to specify the number of years for which the deposit was being made which is 1 to 7 years. And now we have to specify the rate of interest. Which is different for different years. So for the first two years the rate of interest is 3%. And for the next two years, the rate of interest is 4%. While for the remaining three years, that is for the last three years, the rate of interest is 5%. As we know that the principal amount that is being deposited is rupees 5,50,000. The function to find out the future value after seven years. So the function that we will use to find out the future value after 7 years when we have different rates of interest is the function called as FV schedule function. This returns us the future value of a principal amount which is invested when we have different rates of interest. So the syntax requires to enter the principal amount which is 5,50,000 in our case and the schedule is the array where we have specified the rates of interest for different years. So the rates of interest for different years are in this range and close the bracket press enter the future value of this 5,50,000 after 7 years with these different rates of interest is 7,30,586. Now in problem number 2 the investment is being made which is of the same amount in a fund which is earning interest at 6% per annum compounded semi-annually for the first two years, 7% per annum compounded quarterly for the next two years and 8% compounded monthly thereafter. We again have to find out its future value after seven years but there are changing rates of interest along with that the compoundings also keep on changing. Now in this problem also we have to specify the number of years for which the deposit is being made. So the deposit is being made for two, 7 years. As we know that the FV schedule function requires the interest rate which should be the annualized interest rate. So the interest rate that is specified in the problem is called as the nominal rate. These are the nominal rate of interest where the compounding needs to be incorporated to find out their annualized rate of return. Now the number of compoundings in all these cases are different. The compounding for the first two years is the 
semi annual compounding so the compounding will be equals to 2 after this we have quarterly compounding so the compounding in a year will be 4 times for these 2 years and for the last 3 years there are monthly compounding so we will be having compounding which will be 12 times in a year now as we are required to find out the annualized return so that is nothing but the effective rate of interest so effective rate can be calculated with the help of the effect function now you can see that it requires the nominal rate to enter the nominal rate is specified here comma the n p e r y which is n per year that is called as the number of compoundings in a year which we have specified in this cell close the bracket and hit enter you can see that the effective rate of interest is 6.09% when we have semi annual compounding so we can drag this for all the years we can convert this in terms of percentage and increase the decimals now the principal amount in this case is 550000 and the future value of this can be calculated and the function is fv schedule function and the principal amount is 550000 and the schedule requires to enter the annualized rate of interest so annualized rate of interest is nothing but the effective rate of interest that we need to enter so select the range where we have mentioned the effective rate of interest close the bracket and press enter this is the future value of this 550000 after 7 years when we have different rates of interest with different compoundings in different years now in the last problem there is an investment of rupees 450000 that is being made for 8 years the investment earns interest at 8% per annum compounded semi annually for the first 2 years 7% per annum compounded quarterly for the next 4 years and 5% compounded continuously thereafter we are required to find out its future value after 8 so here years we have continuous compounding along with discrete compounding now again specify the number of years for which the investment is being made which is 8 years in this particular case now the nominal rate of interest is So now again to find out the annualized that is the effective rate of interest we need to specify the number of compoundings in a year. So the number of compounding in the first two years is 2 because of semi annual compoundings and after that we have quarterly compounding for the next 4 years. So it will be 4 for the next 4 years while in case of last 2 years the compounding is continuous compounding. So we have to specify it as continuous because there is no function which will give you the effective rate of interest using the continuous compounding. Now effective rate will be calculated with the help of effect function. The nominal rate of interest is this and the number of compoundings in a year which is n per year is in the next column. So close the bracket press enter we will get the effective rate of interest ok now to drag this formula we will drag the formula till 6 years where we have discrete compounding convert this into percentage and increase the decimal while in case of continuous compounding there is no specific function that returns us the effective rate of interest so for this we will be using the formula which is e raised to the power r minus 1 which is exponent exp raised to the power 5 percent so we need to specify that rate of interest now minus 1 so press enter and when we press enter we will get the rate of interest so this is in terms of percentage we need to decrease the decimals And after decreasing the decimals, the rate of interest which is the effective rate of interest in continuous compounding is 5.13% for the last 2 years. 
so principal amount here in this case is 8 lakh 4 lakh 50000 in our case and let's see the future value of this investment after 8 years the function that will be used is known as the fv schedule function principal amount is 4 lakh 50000 comma the schedule is the annualized rate of return or rate of interest which is the effective rate of interest close the bracket press enter this is the future value of this 4 lakh 50000 which we have invested when we have discrete as well as continuous compounding in the scenario when the different rates of interest are given so this is how the future value can be calculated when we have changing rates of interest with different compoundings in different years thank you so much for watching